Hello, everyone. This is uh, September 1st, 2022. This is a SIG networking ingress Nginx project. Um, this is a CNCF uh, subproject, so that means that it is um, beholden to the CNCF code of conduct, which essentially means be awesome to each other. If you have any issues, please report those to Ricardo and myself or to the SIG networking leads. With that, um, I know we had a little bit of a break. Uh, a couple of us took some vacations and had some fun. So we're back to uh, back to the real world, back to work. So with that, we'll go ahead and introduce any of the new members who want to introduce themselves, um, what they are looking to get out of the project, looking to help, or just interested in what we're doing. No pressure. I'll go. Uh, my name is Dylan Turnbull. I actually work for the Nginx uh, Business Development and Alliances Group. And um, I I primarily work in the in the Kate space, um, and our 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 ingress uh, for the rest of the company, the other ingress stuff, um, mainly in in partner in partners and alliances work. And I'm mainly here to find out what's going on, see what's happening. That's that's pretty much it. Well, thanks for joining us, Dale. Sean, do you want to introduce yourself or no? Uh, hi, uh, I, I, I've been to this meeting once. Uh, we discussed about open telemetry, if you remember. Yeah. I do uh, not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it was a while back. Uh, so I, I know that um, um, there's uh, you are working on a stabilization, so I don't want to talk about open telemetry now. But the reason I'm in the meeting uh, is, is I, I would like to be active in this SIG. I went through the code because of open telemetry. I wanted to add, and I'm very interested to have a contribution to the SIG. So just want to see what's going on and find the right. Uh, yeah. We're waiting for, uh, we're waiting to trouble Ricardo for about half an hour uh, with a discussion with SR. Okay. So that's okay. all good time, not, not no hurry, all good time. Yeah, is this around doing the review for open telemetry? Yeah. Okay. Hey, as, right. as the new guy, could I, could I ask for intros from the folks I don't know? Would that be okay at this point? Or is that's that, fine. would that be too time consuming? Yeah, yeah, I um, think so. Okay. Yeah, there's the, there's the four of us. Yeah. Go ahead. Awesome. Ricardo, you can go first. I do. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, my, my name is Ricardo. I work for VMware. I uh, I am one of the maintainers of Ingress and Ginex with a lot of other folks. I've been in this project since 2018, I guess, but I've been in and out until I have actually stepped it up forward to, to take care of the code. I am a bad developer but you folks still need to rely on my code so i'm sorry about that yeah <laughs> uh, we appreciate all your contributions ricardo my name's james strong i'm a solutions architect for chain guard and i've been a part of this project oh i don't know i've been going on two years i don't know two years wow That's i think a long so time. Yeah. um I, I mostly make sure Ricardo is doing what he's uh, supposed to be doing. <laughs> now, I, I help shepherd things along. Um, I try to keep things organized and um, doing reviews and general housekeeping, all the stuff that most people don't want to do. <laughs> Long Magento. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Jin Ho uh, from China. Um, I'm working for IPI7 or AI, uh, and uh, I I also don't 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 remember when I'm starting to contribute to Ingress and JAX. Maybe ninety. Yeah. He Gentile is being very modest. He does all of the hard work that Ricardo doesn't want to do or can't do. <laughs> 
we have two gods, Ricardo and Jinta. <laughs> and least, uh, last but not least, uh, Long. Uh, um, I don't work for anyone. I don't have a job, jobless freelancer. Um, I'm a DevOps guy. I try to answer questions on issues. I try to fix docs or whatever DevOps questions are within. I'm not a developer and I've been doing it for a while. I get training from James and Ricardo and Jinta. That's about it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And I know Carol. So, and I forgot to say my title. I'm a solutions architect as well. So at Nginx Inc, I guess is what we were part of F5. I have to say that to you now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember acquisitions, they're always fun. All right. Um, there was a couple issues that I pulled up on the issue triage that are there in the open topics that we can look at. I, I, I wanna go through those four because they're, they seem kind of important from what I was looking at. And then we can talk about project stabilization stuff where Ricardo is going to give an awesome update on the data plan and control plane split. And we can go from there. I've um, got a couple things. So uh, anybody okay with that? Or is there anything top of mind that we should look at from an I, issues perspective? Can we sort out uh, the release question first? Sure. I forget what this one came up with. Oh. This was just part of all of the metrics and documentation that I think we should, there were some updates to this. I think there was a couple breaking changes, but I think we should probably put this as part of our next release. And so that also, I saw, I know that there's a couple other PRs that are in that people have asked for for the next release. And I know we've got a lot of CVE fixes. I think there's at least three CVE fixes in, probably two of them are open SSL, um, but we probably should, plan some time around for our next release. Well, I uh, I would just look if we have <clears throat> things to cherry pick. I guess we got some uh, bug fixes um, the last one or two weeks, I guess. And then we can, if someone wants to cherry pick to the branch, we can just cherry pick and make the release. I'm, I'm fine with that, I guess. So we need to we need to get a list of a uh, list of PRs that we want to cherry pick into the one three zero release branch. Yeah. Okay, we can so, put that so out. Ricardo, so Ricardo, the reason for asking for this discussion was earlier it seemed like an easy thing to make it just a couple of cherry picks, but now there's actually two or maybe three flavors of uh, PRs. One is the CVEs. So that's the pump to Alpine 16.2, 316.2 and all that. So that is that is one type of PRs. The second type of PRs are some bug fixes. And the third type of PRs are features that even you have looked at and answered on, and James also has looked at, and even Jinta has looked at. It just needs to close. So do okay. we want to? Do we care for the third type? And not sure for not for it? not for the bug fixes. I, uh, so we are in feature freeze, right? So the idea of feature freeze is actually we don't care about. Sorry, that's a bad wording. We they don't are not care. Right now. Yeah, we don't care about features right now for uh, the new releases, right? It's not that we don't care about them at all. We yeah. do, and we want to get them in the next releases. We are not prioritizing them, as as James said. Yeah. But uh, for the first one, so so for the first one, the CVEs ones, uh, I guess that just making a new release uh, will uh, even not cherry picking the image. Sorry, we need to cherry pick. But yeah, anyway, uh, uh, just cherry picking the image, the, the the final image, the Alpine image to the final container. Uh, we'll solve it, right? So uh, we don't need to do the cherry pick of the whole things like the test runner or whatever to this branch, just the final, just to the Docker file in rootfs to use uh, the, 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 the last image. And uh, for the bug fixes, we need to cherry pick them as well. 
the main problem that I can see right now is, uh, again, we have the, that uh, situation where cloud builds, they are just configured to run on a specific branch, right? They're only running on main, yeah. 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 So I think this is the, on the only real problem that this one and people that relies on, on the manifests that are on main, right? So people yeah. that just go to main and do curl or whatever. So uh, I would just split this in two efforts. First, we need to open an issue for that uh, saying, hey, release a new version. And in that issue, we need just to clarify everything that we need. Right, so cherry pick the image, cherry pick the bug fixes, then make sure that the cloud build runs and make sure that our manifests, even the main, even the ones in main, they are pointing to the right release. And I am not against uh, uh, just changing the manifests in main to point to that one. So we, we keep in main just the, I mean, version 131, 131, 132, that's, that's fine, right? I think it's easier that then again, creating a stable text file and changing everything in kind or whatever, uh, kind documentation or whatever. Can, but can, go ahead, yeah. The question now is, have you, it doesn't seem like you have actually merged anything on the control plane, data plane split into main, have you? Uh, no, I didn't, but we had some features and some other stuff that has been merged and I don't want, so we can actually, let, let's do this thing long. Uh, yeah. Can we do a, com a comparison between the commits from the last release and where we are right now? So Should we can at least, that, right? yeah, so at least we can, we can see the, 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 the real problem is that we already cut a branch that, that right? So, uh, but can you can you take a look, James? Like, yeah. No, but well, besides the problem of the branch, do you uh, can you can you can you, can you like say it out loud? What would be the problem to solve if we want to make a release out of main now? The problem for me right now is that we are gonna make a release with things that we we don't expect to be in a bug fix release right i'm just looking at I, I, trying to find our last one com, com, compare the button on the left yeah. yeah with main oh you can only compare on the tags crap uh, but you can you can yeah. you can just point and then then change on the url that's fine because ricardo we set expectation for some of these um PRs that we will we'll merge it. It's all done, ready uh, for review, and we'll merge it, and then we'll release. So it means we're actually looking at January timeframe. Let me look into it. Sorry, guys, give me one second. I'm trying to pull it up. Thanks, Gentile. So we've got 84 commits between then and there. From our release perspective, we <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do a quick look. Docs, a bunch of bumps from dependabots, typos, and fixes in our builds, utils to a specific location. That's just the move to get ready for the data plane split. I don't think that will cause issues. Bump this in Alpine. This this won't cause issues because uh the the YouTube's because it's already passing on enter and test. I, yeah. I didn't change yeah, it yeah. any feature. Yeah. Yeah. Our V two updates the base images. CI all of my shitty commits. Ignore those. Removing um, all of the customization. So removing all of this deployment stuff wouldn't break it, or yeah. even. <clears throat> it looks like there's just a lot of bumps. From depend about. I'm not seeing anything. We got the 119 bump. The yeah, the one the 119 one is the one that actually concerns me. We would break something because we are just breaking the leader election stuff, right? So is the leader election working as an example? Uh, we already I thought 130 had the leader you, election. You people said it's not working for them, but it is not proven that uh, election. Go ahead. Uh, 
Gentile? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, the uh, only change could be election rela uh, re related. Uh, we use uh, we use uh, this API. Okay. So uh, yeah, but okay, we are already testing. I mean, uh, I don't think there is too much that may there break is. here. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking into. I mean, CI and end to end tests are passing. Once we cut the cut the release, yeah. Okay, up to you, folks. I mean, I'm okay with cutting a release from main if you think it's safe. I think it's safe. Till now, it is safe. Uh, the, very soon, it will not be safe for two reasons. One is your control plane, data plane, uh, PR merges, and then. Um, so about that, I was going to ask, and I was going to bring it up when we start talking about the control plane split. Um, do we want to do what we did with the V1 update and just have that on a separate branch and a separate release candidate, like a beta release like we did? So do the same thing. So then we wouldn't have this problem that we're, yeah. we think we're going to have. Yeah, we can do that. I wasn't going to do this way because I was afraid of getting into that merge conflict hell of life that we had when we did when we did v1 yeah but this is something that i need to pay so uh i won't block you folks because of my 4k lines pr right now so i will have a separate branch i will work on that separate branch i, I want to merge in a way that the control that that nginx works uh, still works uh I mean, that's not great, but uh, it still works on both ways, putting, at least for the next the release. Hmm? I was gonna say, it's putting all the cherry picking on you. Yeah, yeah. We can also uh, do what we did too with legacy and main, right? We switched main branch. I don't, so I, we I, I, I don't think, this is the this is the time that I miss Carlos because Carlos knows how to solve all of these release stuff easy. So I I can ask him very nicely to yeah join, yeah to join our next community meeting. I think and we can I think push it, that discussion to them. I think it would be good. I mean, right now we can cut a release from main. There is no impact stuff, but. Uh, this is not sustainable if we want if we are gonna keep two branches again, right? So one with the control plane split and one without the control plane split. I don't know if we are gonna do that. I was thinking about implementing the control plane split, but keeping uh, keeping the, the 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 real control plane still within Ginex code uh, at least for the next release. But I need to plan that. So uh, right now there is no problem uh, instead of cherry picking cutting a branch. But before I do my merge, I think uh, before I do my merge, I think that we need to solve this branching problem. I won't so, merge my stuff before we solve that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll cut the one three one from main, mm -hmm. and then on our ne in our next meeting, we'll invite Carlos from Sig Release to discuss how we should fix this issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'm thinking tomorrow afternoon. We'll do the same thing. Pull it, put up a meeting and start the one three one cut. Maybe uh, I would just ask if you folks can take care of that because my week is a mess. No, that's fine. That's why I was saying I... tomorrow afternoon because I've got client meetings in the morning and then I'm yeah. free in the afternoon. I mean, I can be asynchronous. I can open Slack asynchronous if you need me. Uh, uh, Kubernetes is Slack. I just won't be able to join a meeting tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's fine. Sure. We can do it. Sure. We can do it all sync. I, I can run it asynchronously tomorrow via Slack. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. I think it'll take again two, three days, but that's fine. It shouldn't take two or three days if we, because uh, if I open them, I think Ricardo has to approve them, mm -hmm. at least on the, the infrastructure side. On the, the 
never mind. I, we'll be fine. I'll I'll schedule two hours for myself to get it done. We should be able to get it done in two hours. Okay. James has my cell phone. He can call me and keep asking me to merge stuff. It's all good. I I'll, I'll schedule the time and I'll get one through one cut. Okay, but the change log has to be perfect this time. Uh yeah. So <laughs> that's always the fun part. Yeah. Okay. That's two three days. It has to be perfect. We can't mess it up because we made com we made like commits. We committed to people on issues and PRs. And so that's that's also one of the reasons why I added the release note section in all of the PRs and feature requests. So when people put in PRs, um, let's make sure that they're filling out the release note section. Otherwise, we shouldn't be accepting PRs. Right. So that's going forward. So now. Yeah. For uh, September, October, November, December, January. For these five months, we have to get this chain log right. Otherwise, they'll keep bothering us with saying um, why why you're not mentioning uh, why the why the chain log is not clean. Okay. Yep. No. Um. I I mean I agree, but. That also, like you said, takes two to three days and makes a release cut. You have you have the link to the GitHub issue and the get and the the commits. Um, right. We'll try to make it as clean as possible. But again, I'm not going to spend two to three days writing a perfect release log. I'll make sure the stuff that gets highlighted needs to be highlighted. Okay. All right. So is that so? Continuing along the fun discussion, so I'm going to put here. Um, so we had someone put in a, uh, a request onto backporting something into the legacy branch. It looks like it was just changes to the um, control to the controller uh, to the Helm chart. It looks like he's just adding some values, but this does bring up the point. Should we, it's been up for a while, we're like four or five releases away, and I think two or three Kubernetes releases away. We did discuss about dropping legacy support. Um, I don't think we should actually be delete the branch, but- No, we need to freeze it. Freeze it and not accept any more PRs from it. Yeah. And I think we are right now that Kubernetes 125 was released. There is no more reason we should keep things su yep. that support 114 or 115. I just think we need to state that loud and clear. Hey, uh, we are going to do a last release for legacy branch and we won't do support for it anymore. Because they should be, they should, they, the, those branches are already too old and they should be running newer versions. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Anyone else? No, I, just uh, I think uh, I think uh, we can drop a drop a the legend says branch support. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Actually, you know what? If we even if we do delete the branch, the releases are still there. They're still in GitHub, and it's not like we're going to delete them. Yeah, that's true. So if there's no branch, they can't put in PRs. I would keep the branch just for like a comparison on where the code was frozen, right? Okay. So, okay. I don't think we have any PRs in the, many PRs in the legacy anyway, but yeah. I'll go ahead and um, close this one out and put the note out there. Um, we can also make that as part of the update when we put out the the beta for the control plane data plane split. We'll also mention that we've deleted that we we're not accepting and we're not supporting the legacy branch, which is pre, which is four nine I think or five one was our last one. Those won't be supported anymore. Yeah. Okay. Easy enough.
Uh, da, da, da. I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at this one. I, I'll, I can drop it in the channel, but 8972. Uh, wanted to look at that one because it sounds like a potential bug. Mm, weird. Yeah, so, one, one of one of the things that I'm doing is actually uh, not right now, but I'm I'm splitting the code from Webhook as well from the Ingress controller. Someone oh, asked it in some meeting. Yeah, someone asked it in some meeting or some channel. Hey, can we have like a live Webhook, whatever? And yeah, it does make totally sense to me. Uh, the thing is that uh, we do have the Webhook. The Webhook also tests the Nginx configuration file, right? And we won't be able to test the, the, the configuration anymore, uh, but this can be uh, sort of uh, uh, up to the admin to enable or disable. So having a more heavy webhook or a more light one, just, just checking for the business logic, but not the configuration from Nginx. Uh, I won't compromise myself to take a look into this one because I really want to focus on the split control plane and data plane. But this seems, if someone wants to take a look, this seems pretty no, easy I to test. It. No, I looked at it. The claim that is being made is a false claim. If you have, if you spend time seeing the examples he has posted, then, then it's very clear. Why, so, why is it? So this one should cause an error. This should be if you provision two ingresses at the same time with the same path, yes, the 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 emission control the uh, this should get validated and not sent through. This one shouldn't, right? Well, so if you read more, the actual the the value for the host spec is different in the in. If, I think maybe you have to go down or in there are more examples. But isn't this the value? Oh, okay. Of the TLS one. Uh, okay. So, so he's changed, the, the user is changing the TLS host, not the host itself, the key. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. yes. It's actually invalid. What what he's claiming is invalid because I I I tested this, then I I asked for a more or better working example, and in the better working example, he's the host that is used in the the value that is used in the host spec is not even present in the TLS dot host uh, spec. So it's very simple that if you put a host in the um, in the rules dot holds host spec, that host spec needs to be in the SNI and the cert that is used, and it also needs to be listed in the TLS dot host spec, and it's not there. So he's using some example or something that is not there in the TLS spec. Okay, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a better question here. Okay, given this situation. Can someone use this kind of configuration to steal another person's domain and path from ingress? Like using this conflict to direct to, to wrong ingress? Yeah, but okay, just as a note, you should see that right now in the middle of the screen that James screen is sharing, you can see that there's a TLS, TLS spec for cafe, right? Cafe. But you can see down below, just below that, in the rules host spec, the host name is dummy. So dummy is not there in the TLS host list. So this would throw this would throw an HTTPS error, not even matching. It wouldn't even work from a end user's perspective, even if it, it would, no, his whole claim is this works and this this will work. The admission webhook will not block this simply because. The, in the TLS, the TLS spec is uh, applies to the entire uh, object, right? Entire ingress yeah. object. Yeah, I'm, so I'm saying from an end user's perspective, you would get yeah. an error in your browser, or you would have to ignore your SSL errors. Uh, okay. 
I'm trying to answer Ricardo's question. So even if ingress allowed this, and you go to look, you go to that example, the the cert won't match, and you'll get a browser error. For that request, yes. For the dummy request, yes, it won't match. But for the other request, the cafe request, it will match. So, so should we should should we should the admission control should the admission validate that the TLS host spec matches the host spec in the ingress rules? No, it should not match because that will be different server block and location block. Okay, but I'm 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 putting on a different way. Okay, imagine that you configure uh, your ingress as mysci.com on port 80 and you don't state that you have a TLS or whatever, you don't put the TLS uh, rule, okay? And then I come later and I see that you did a mistake of not enabling, not enabling TLS and I do exactly the same configuration as you do, but I enable TLS on my side, right? So you will want decide the website without the TLS and I will want the website with the TLS, right? And today, uh, and today on the browsers, what usually they are doing is they are trying first to connect to port to, to port 443 and then go back and, and, and fall back to port 80. So I just steal your domain, your, your, your ingress. Make sense? I'm, no. I'm using, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm no, using no. a misconfiguration of... No, that is not the flow. The flow in the example that you said and combining your example with the example on the screen, what will happen is you'll get a fake certificate served to you. On the I browser, you get a fake certificate. I will, get, I will get a fake certificate? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. So that is why he's complaining that he first created a different ingress with the host name and path matching in the second rule. So the way you, James, you highlight, yeah, see, see that highlighted, what you highlighted just now, <clears throat> that rule, the host plus path, he already has created an ingress earlier using a different YAML file. So he's saying it should not happen again because he, he already has that. So the, so the way I understand is what will happen is uh, the Lua, Lua script or whatever we use for synchronization, it will just go check and if it is the same uh, same specs for uh, host as well as path, no difference. It will just oh, it will add uh, it will add a add a new annotation or whatever new directive engine directive that's if it is required. Otherwise, it will just forget it. It just add uh, just no not no, it will not. He expects a web, uh, webhook rejection, and that's not going to happen. Actually, you can see his claim. He actually writes that if his second YAML, the second YAML that he's using, he doesn't have the first rule, which is a dummy example and something, something. If he doesn't have that, then the webhook is rejecting it. He's actually writing that. He's written that somewhere down below in a note. It only doesn't reject when he has two rules in one object, in one YAML, one ingress uh, intended payload. <clears throat> ingress. All right. Um, I, I think the question is whether it should or shouldn't. If I deploy this second one, should, should the admission controller de decline this one? That, I think that's the the base question here. Yes. And the answer is no. Because it is a valid, ing it's a valid ingress object, but this one already exists. Yes. So why doesn't it reject it if it already exists? Because uh, as per whatever Lua or whatever logic we're writing, the way I under understand so far, 
there are two rules, not just one rule. If there is only this one rule, then it would be a ditto copy of an existing and then the web book will reject it. So he's actually mentioned hmm. it in his first line. He's saying there's a piece of code somewhere where it only checks for the first rule host. And if the first rule host is different, then it goes ahead and it doesn't reject. So he's right. So it means we have, we can't deep dive into, in, because in real world, nobody will use something like this. So we can't go imagine all the permutation combinations of weirdness that people want to configure and have the webhook check for every single whimsical, you know, attempt. When we have time and developers, I guess we will, we would do that. But right away, I don't think it's a problem or bug. So, so uh, you, you said something that when we have time and people, so I can take from that, that this is an improvement that we actually need, but not a bug, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So in, if you go in that direction, there is actually several TLS related issues people have reported. For example, they want multiple client certificates, right, on MTLS and things like that. So there is several valid and good improvements, and just one user, and just one user or two or anybody who seconds this kind of um, issues or says, okay, I am also facing this. They're almost always a coworker of that person or somebody from the same company. So right now, for example, you can see that there is one more issue that's really, I thought was a real big bug that uh, after adding the release API code that Jintao did, um, somebody is complaining that on Azure, um, established TCP connections die every 10 minutes. And uh, that, okay. that one, let's not, that's, that's, let's, let's not conflate these because we've been talking about this one for about 12 minutes. Um, right. So I can, um, so I'm saying, you know, I was just saying that there is many such things that many such uh, single user or two user features and improvements that people have asked, but I'm pending state and all those, like I said, there's a third category of PRs. Some are PR, some are just in issues. Yeah. Uh, what I, what I just don't want is us to start closing stuff and losing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't think we should close it. I think we should like uh, a V2 uh, looking at improvements. So this, I, I would say this is a feature because yes. they, it, it's a separate, it, it is a separate ingress object with two rules, even if the rules do match. Um, so it's an improvement to check all of the rules in an ingress against all of the existing. Right. So let's look, <clears throat> I'll make that comment. I'll leave it at that. And I'll make sure that we put it, I'll put it on the backlog. Right. Okay. Can we just move with yep. the agenda um, then? Yeah. yeah. Um, the only last thing I had on the action of open item stuff was just closing the community survey. I didn't know. I, I didn't respond back to uh, um, Josh's, Josh? Yes. Um, request. We only had 62 responses. If you guys think that's fine, we can close it and we'll get the data and start putting the presentation together for KubeCon which is ooh, very close. It's next yeah. month. <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna, and I, I need to get started on our project. Our, yeah, our I, 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 told, I told Carlos that I was just defer to you that one because I need to finish another <laughs> one, another presentation. So I'm just going to ask James to put whatever he wants there. So I'll, I'll grab some stats from DevStats and we can close out the survey and get the results and start looking at them. Um, Unfor I mean, 62 is unfortunate because, you know, it's 10,000 stars on the repo and lots of people use Ingress, but um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll close that and I'll get the data and I can share it out to everyone. Um, we've got 15 minutes left, Ricardo, do you want to talk a little bit more about the data plane split? Yeah, so I will, I will try to be really uh, uh, direct on that. Uh, we, uh, so I have 
I took a lot of time actually trying to figure out which would be the best approach of doing that instead of just uh, going into one or the other one. And I have realized that the easier way to do that right now is to, uh, uh, the final step of ingress is actually getting a whole structure and generating, getting that structure and sending to Nginx templating to do the template stuff. And the, the, the cool thing on that is that, that 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 structure contains not only the configuration, but also the backends and if something changed or, or, or other things. So it was on one idea that Elvin gave me uh, uh, two or three weeks ago. So we are right now, the split, uh, the status that we are on the split right now is it is working. So I have a control plane and a data plane running on my kind cluster here. Let me see if it's working uh, uh, or not. Uh, but hold on, it, it is working. Uh, so we can see as an example, okay, I have it here. Uh, we can see that uh, whenever I, let me share my screen. Uh, whenever we generate a new, uh, you need to allow me, James. Uh, whenever we generate a new, a new uh, uh, a, a new configuration or something like that. This configuration is sent to to data plane or to all of the data planes watching uh, the, the 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 control plane, and it will then start reconfiguring stuff, right? So as you can see here, I have the ingress in Ginex control plane data plane, and uh, ingress in Ginex and let's take a look into the, the logs. So if I come here and do a kubectl create ingress something, where is my ingress? Okay, I'm gonna do this really fast. Ingress my project here. Okay, and I'm gonna just gonna change here and create another thing here. We are gonna say see that it passes to the admission, then it passes the event, and finally uh, it triggers a new configuration here, right? Uh, I'm not sure why the data plane is not showing anything, but what's happening uh, behind the scenes, it's that my uh, the data plane is just receiving uh, this configuration as part of a gRPC package containing the whole uh, template, and it's just gonna take that template structure split between things that should be dynamic configuration and things that should be static configuration. Then it will write the Nginx configuration file and it will just call the Lua endpoint to do the configuration of the of the endpoints, right? Uh, let me see if I can uh, exec. What, sorry? I was gonna say that's pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, for you, not for me. That's been that has been spending something like four months doing this. Kubectl, Zach, I'm an idiot. I just don't know how to. Zach. Okay, so if we come here to etc in Ginex, we are gonna see it should be that this rule that I have created. Uh, should be here. Uh, it's not. I'm not sure why this isn't working. Maybe one. So we have some problems, and one of them is that when uh, when communication ends, it's not reestablished. But this is something that uh, this is something that is my is my is taking care on the retry stuff and other things, right? So. Uh, Okay, so here we go. Now it's it's working. So that's exactly. It. So if I just come here and create another one, uh, uh, here it is. So it was pretty fast, right? So I have this. I'm here. My login because why use the debugger instead of printing messages uh, with mm -hmm. the version, right? So I can see that the version that I had changed. It just applies the configuration and says, "Okay, I have a backend reload, and just do, does the reload of the backend, and that's all." And and returning here, uh, we can see that uh, the data plane posted back 
that it had a reload configuration here, right? So uh, it just said, hey, uh, I had a new configuration and because of that, I have just triggered a, a reload. So this is what's working right now, right? So we have the control plane and the data plane. The control, the control plane have a service that uh, can publish the events back when it receives from, from the ingress controller, right? So this is something that I have added here. And uh, it can provide a watcher that every time a com the configuration changes, uh, all of the data planes, they can just grab the new configuration and just do whatever it needs to be done to reconfigure the backend instead of getting all of the ingresses and doing all of the calculations. So my, my expectation next uh, is to, uh, to finish this and make it, uh, sorry folks, it's to make this uh, properly work and, and fix uh, the end-to-end -end tests. Uh, I mean, just paged me saying that he finished uh, uh, migrating the end-to-end -end tests to the, new, to the new model without the HTTP expect. So I want to merge that thing and then rebase this and uh, start doing the end-to-end -end tests and checking. At least if everything that we have in end-to-end -end tests are, let's say, 75% of the things, they are still working. Right, so if I can create an ingress and I can get this ingress, if I can create an ingress and, and have the session affinity and other things, I know that the logics, they are working. So the next step, it's gonna be just working on the wire, on the gRPC layer, uh, which is what Ismail is working, doing the test for me and, 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 and for us, right? And, and I want to check with him, what's the progress on that and getting the retry and other things that won't get me into this situation that you've seen uh, 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 before of like losing the connection and not reestablishing the connection. So getting the properly the performance between the control plane and the data plane working fine and even testing that, seeing if I just keep creating and deleting a lot of pods and creating and deleting a lot of configurations, how much of the network bandwidth I would take just for all of those configurations and, and, and so on. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's, as you can see, it's working not the final way, but it's it's working and I will just uh, work a bit more during the weekend on this. One thing that will help, would help me a lot in the future is as soon as we get uh, the survey ready, start removing stuff, right? So as an example, Zipkin, Jagger, Open Tracing, call it the way you want. It's not working here, here because it renders its own template. On the other hand, one thing that I, we can do right now with this approach is that we can now split the configuration of each of the virtual hosts, right? Because I receive all of these things as a structure, but then I can just go through all of the virtual hosts and create separate uh, a configuration for each virtual host, as an example, one thing that we've been discussing in the past. Uh, so, so I just so want to finish this, go ahead. Does the move to getting the open telemetry stuff fix that problem? And we can kill two birds with one stone? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so I will be really honest. I have tried uh, to do the open telemetry stuff one time, uh, but I was using Debian, I guess, instead of Alpine. I have failed in a lot of ways. In so many ways of compiling that thing that I've said, yeah, whatever, someone is gonna solve this for me. So I couldn't make open telemetry work. My idea of making open telemetry work was actually to make sure that we could just with open telemetry do whatever we've been doing with the Jagger, Zipkin, open tracing, uh, all of the models that we have just with one model and, and just changing okay. the way that we send the tracing for, for the backend. Because of that yeah. scene has changed. That scene has changed, okay? It compiles. Sorry? That scene has changed. Open telemetry compiles perfectly now. Esan was, you know, did a lot of work on that. It compiles perfectly. It manually it loads, and Esan even has got uh, stats uh, in GUI in Grafana. So right now the scene is individual components are working and tested. Um, we uh, and just like we discussed with you, whenever the right time comes. Mm -hmm. uh, where to where to discuss with you about implementing the the, the so, so I, I will I will then return to you when ask so you will remove from my plate this okay yeah so I want I, 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 I would focus I would no, just, I, just focus on getting the end to end finished and then mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So we talked about dropping those uh, Jaeger and uh, Zipkin and all of those yeah. in favor of Rotil. So when we release the alpha and the beta, we'll just put those in the release notes that those aren't supported. Yeah, my, 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 my ask was going to be something like that. So what I want long is to make sure that open telemetry can replace everything that we have on the telemetry side right now, even Datadog. We compile yeah. Datadog. I have no idea why we do that, but I want to get rid of all of those things and have just open telemetry being able to send to Datadog, uh, to Jaeger, Zipkin, whatever we have as a backend, right? So if you folks like you and Esan that are working on this, you can put a paper, a document, something like that, just showing, hey, we have this in Ginex. It doesn't need to be Ingress in Ginex, okay? We have this in Ginex with the open telemetry model and we can send the tracings to Zipkin, Datadog. I can, I can try a license of Datadog if we need that just to prove it. What I want is to have less moving parts in our code and less moving parts, less moving modules or whatever. So we can say, okay, we just support open telemetry and we don't care on what you have on the back end. Make sense? Yes. Like that so, idea. So uh, I, um, maybe I can add something here. Mm -hmm. I, I already have this working for cool. ng uh, Ingress Nginx. Cool. Awesome. So, yeah, can, we will, just, just, yeah, yeah, go ahead, James. I was just gonna say what you just stated, Ricardo, like if we're gonna drop the support, the direct support, we need we need migration docs for folks on how to use the open telemetry to push things out. Um, since we're gonna drop it, drop direct support. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is just how you configure open telemetry, right? So this is how, just how you add configurations to Nginx conf uh, to open, because open telemetry is just a model that will take the tracings and send to whatever backend you, you support, okay. right? So I've seen the documents, uh, I've seen actually some of the compilations. I just want to make sure that we can drop Zipkin, Jaeger, open tracing, all of those things that we have right now in like a PR, we can even do that PR. We can start doing that PR if you folks don't mind. You can you can start working on that as we do this release. I just want to make sure that we support the other stuff. I, I mean, we, we still support that, but just using open open telemetry. I've seen that some things they are still better on open telemetry C++ model. Uh, uh, so I, I just want to make sure everything is working fine. And yeah, uh, yeah go no ahead. It. It's only task items. So Ehsan has got a lot of uh, ready code for that. Um, and so does uh, one more guy. And we just list of, this is just a list of task items for integration. There is no blocker on that. So okay. you start, can start, start doing that. You, you, you can start doing that folks. Uh, don't block on control plane and data plane. If you can work on the already existing code to have open telemetry instead of all of the other things, just start doing that, send me to the review, and then I can just, uh, uh, I mean, fetch the branch later for the split control plane and data plane. Just but don't removing, block, go ahead. But removing PR, uh, I, I don't think Asan, it may take Asan too much long time to, fo to focus on the removing PR. So removing Datadog, removing open tracing, Zipkin, Jaeger. Uh, like not not removing, know. not just removing, but making open telemetry works with those backends. Yeah, like removing current code and then the way it works, as, as and go ahead. So the way uh, it implements. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I've already gone through the code, so I can also take care of uh, removing the um, anything that you don't want to have. Okay, okay. that's great. So by removing awesome. Ricardo, what happens is within open telemetry, like Esan was explaining, there's a component that has to be compiled um, for exporting or sending to different backends. Esan, yeah. you that also ready? Yeah, so, so the module will use uh, OTLP gRPC protocol and then uh, whatever backend is, uh, can support that they, they can just uh, receive the, the traces. And normally people uh, deploy a collector which does the conversion. So if, uh, for example, if the Zipkin didn't support OTLP gRPC, you have the 
collector, you talk to collector and collector will convert it and send it to the zip king. Okay, so that's just normal open telemetry support. So, all right, awesome. Thank you for this. Um, uh, sorry, I've been trying to rush folks because I know it's 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. okay. Uh, okay, uh, for the next meeting, uh, I want to discuss the announcements from Nginx and if we can rely on something. The recent announcements on the open source stuff. I won't oh, take like the Nginx right agent now. and all that? Yeah, I'll add yeah. that to the action items. Okay. See you, folks. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice, Have a nice week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.